It's interesting what you just said about change, you know, and and adapting to change. You know, obviously, you know, it's I mean, it's happening in the world, but it's also happening in our industry. And how do you adapt to change? How how do you deal with it? What is your mechanism with it? Well, I I try not to overthink too many things about change because it's always happening. And right now, I think we're in in warp speed change. A lot of the paradigms that were so rigidly in place no longer, you know, they're not, they don't work. Um, so, so for me, I think, you know, I meditate, I try to stay present. I try to, um, you know, realize I cannot control anything. I can only show up and be visionary in terms of my sense of purpose. And so that's how I handle change because I had no idea I was going to be a film composer years and years ago when I first moved to LA. It wasn't something I thought about. I was just finding my way, if you will. You know, some people, this is what they know they want to do. They want to film, be a film composer. For me, I've just always known I wanted to be a musician. I've always wanted to be an artist. And I've always enjoyed various platforms of expression. And so the, um, even how that happened, I had been scoring a lot of music with theater, regional theater. Um, when I lived in New York, I did some things at the public theater. And, and uh, as I was about to leave New York, I got a gig uh, working on a big, a big feature, a documentary feature. And when I moved to LA, which I didn't come here for film scoring purposes, I came here because New York had, I was burnt out. <laughs> burn up by New York and I wanted to change. Long story short, the theater director, one of the theater directors I worked with was also a Sundance mentor. And he was talking about it and I didn't even know what Sundance was. And so I went on their website, saw the Composers Lab Fellowship. And since I had just finished this film and had a few other little projects I had done, I put together my portfolio and I got that fellowship. And so again, that was, me sort of just trying to figure out, well, what am I, what am I going to be doing while I'm here that's creatively inspiring and engaging? Catherine, you just mentioned, so, you know, your, your Broadway theater, symphonic work. What's up for you next creatively? Uh, are you doing, uh, are you working on another film? Are you doing more symphonic work? What uh, does 2021 look like for you so far? You know, um, it, it, it's interesting. I'm thankfully been quite busy. Um, I have a couple of projects that I'm working on that I'll talk about more as they come into, um, you know, more fruition. Um, but I'm excited about them. And then on my own, I just finished my record of, of my songs. I'm really excited to share that. Uh, I'm in the middle of um, getting that together. And um, I have a couple of commissions coming up. Um, one with the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra and then um, with my residency with the Chicago Symphony Meta. So it's a lot of really great uh, creative collaborations. And, you know, my whole thing is to demystify being creative and being self-expressive. People want you to be pigeonholed and, well, you know, you have to specialize in this, that, and the other. And I'm, I've always been a curious person and curious creatively. So that's one of the reasons why I'm always looking to work in other platforms and not just be exclusive to one. Well, I look forward to uh, seeing both your films, uh, Rita Moreno and Amy Tan, and keep us posted about all your ventures this year. And, you know, uh, you know, also for the Alliance for Women Film Composers. And, um, it's just, it's really such an inspiration to talk to you. And I'm sorry, we only have 20 minutes, but uh, uh, this was very, thanks for sharing your wisdom, oh, for opening up pleasure. and sharing I'm your knowledge. I'm honored that you reached out and thank you. Thank you so much.